All right, let's take a look at how to graph rational functions. Um, first of all, what is a rational function? It's, well, first of all, functions are when we have some output, it, usually it goes into something we call y, and some input, and usually that goes into something that we call x. And when we have that input and that output in the form of an equation, we call it a function. Um, there's other ways to define a function, but that's one in, in algebra class. The other thing is, rational function. Well, rational expressions are just fractions with variables in them, uh, especially a variable in the denominator. And in this case, this is probably one of the simplest rational functions, y equals 1 over x. So let's explore what the graph of this looks like. Um, let's recall that a lot of times when we want to make a graph, uh, the first thing we do is just make a table. I call this Deep Woods Math Survival Skills. If you, have, if you encounter a strange function you've never seen before, make a table. This is the answer. Okay, so we'll put x here and y here, and let's think up some clever values for x. Um, maybe we'll try uh, having x equals 0, and uh, maybe 1, and 2, and negative 1, and negative 2. Uh, those are the usual values, so why don't we try those and see where we go with this. Um, so if I try to put 0 in for x, I immediately get a really bad result. The problem with uh, 1 divided by 0 is that uh, we, we get a result that is undefined. We don't get a number. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to have to strike out. We're going to have to say, uh, let's forget about um, putting x equal to 0. So let's try another value. Let's try x equals 1. If x equals 1, then y equals 1. And if x equals 2, then y equals 1 half. And let's try these negative values. If x equals negative 1, then y is going to also equal negative 1. And if x equals negative 2, then y will equal negative 1 half. And let's go ahead and try graphing these points. So here we go. Um, let's see here. We've got x is 1, y is 1, so we'll put a dot right about here. And then we've got uh, x is 2, y is 1 half, so x is 2, y, ooh, y goes right there. And then we get x is negative 1 and y is negative 1, so right there. And then we get x is 2 and y is negative 1 half, so we go right there. Now, I can tell you from my experience we're missing some points, so we're going to try a couple extra ones. And uh, I hopefully you're thinking what I'm thinking. This one-half here and negative one-half is a bit of a clue. I think we need to try an x value of one-half. Um, let's see what happens if we set x equal to that. And then uh, also we'll try uh, x equals negative one-half. I think those are going to be important. Well, if we put 1 half in for x, 1 divided by 1 half gets us 2. And I'll leave that for you to work on it for another time uh, to try to figure out why that is. You can do it on your calculator. Do 1 divided by 0.5. You'll see you get 2. Um, 1 divided by negative 1 half gets us negative 2. So let's go ahead and uh, put some dots on here. So if x is 1 half, I get y equals 2. So I can go right up here. And if x equals negative 1 half, then uh, y equals negative 2. So I'll put a dot right down there. And then uh, we can put in more dots, but I can tell you right now that the pattern um, is something along these lines. Uh, it will we'll just try to follow this th these dots as best we can and it goes a bit like this and then we'll follow these dots like such and I'll put an arrow to indicate that we keep going in that direction and that's true going up this way as well. Now something that you cannot tell from making this graph, but if, it, if we put in enough values for x and y, what we would see is there's some extra fancy stuff going on here. And I'm about to give you a vocabulary word. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a funny one. Um, it's called the asymptote. And here's how it's spelled. And let me show you what the asymptote looks like.
It turns out that this function, y equals 1 over x, um, has what's known as a vertical and a horizontal asymptote. Now, in this case, what I've done is I've added a, a vertical line that is dashed. Uh, it's dashed because it's not part of our graph, but it's important to the graphing of this rational function. And that, that dashed green line is known as the vertical asymptote. And what an asymptote is, it's a limit. It says that even as this orange line, as this orange curved line uh, cruises along, it will get very close to this dashed green line, but it will never quite reach it. And, uh, and, and the same is true of this orange line down here. It's going to cruise and it's going to get closer and closer and closer and closer to this dashed green line, but it'll never quite reach it. So this line is uh, vertical. Uh, and since it's an asymptote, which is a limit, we call this a vertical asymptote. And rational functions have these. One of the ways that we can figure out where the vertical asymptote is, is by looking at our rational function and saying, hey, where, uh, it, where can I not have an x value? And in this particular case, we have to say that the domain is limited. x cannot be all real numbers. x can certainly not be equal to zero. We, we said that earlier here in our table. And because x cannot be equal to zero, that means in, for this rational function that we must have a vertical asymptote at x is at x equals zero. Uh, and again, this means x is not equal to zero because it cannot be for this function to be true. But in our case, it gives us the asymptote. So um, let's go ahead and make a line to say that we get the vertical asymptote from looking at all the values that x cannot be for rational functions. Now, um, rational functions also may have uh, a horizontal asymptote. And uh, in this case, I, I've, I've put where the horizontal asymptote is uh, for this guy. But let's, let's take a look and figure out how I came up with this. Uh, first of all, I, again, I want to repeat that the asymptote shows that this line, it will get, get very close to y equals 0, but never quite reach it. And this guy will keep going and going and going and get very close to y equals 0, uh, but never quite reach it. Now, how do I know that? Well, let's take a look at some possible x values. Um, and we're going to start off with basic ones. Let's try setting x equal to 10. Um, if x equals 10, then I'm going pretty far this way. Uh, I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and even beyond. Okay. And if x equals 10, then what I get is y equals 1 tenth. In other words, my y value is getting very close to the x-axis. What if I said x equal to 100? Well, then I get y equals 1 over 100, which even though 1 tenth seemed like it was getting closer to the x-axis, uh, 1 one hundredth is even closer. Um, that's a very small distance from the x-axis. And if I said x equal to 1,000, then I'm going to get even closer to the x-axis. And as x gets larger, um, the, uh, uh, let's call it uh, very big, then what happens is y gets very small. And that's worth making a note of. That's why uh, we know that uh, the horizontal asymptote is at um, y equals 0. And if we did the same thing with this table for negative x values, negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000, we'd see the same result. And, and what we would see is that as we go further and further this way, we get closer and closer to the x-axis. But you'll notice no matter how large the number is for x, we never quite get to zero. It's always one over some very large number. We get close, but we never quite get there. So let's recap a little bit here, um, because this asymptote stuff is pretty important. Um, let, make a note of this. Uh, the vertical asymptote uh, occurs at the value or values of x that make the denominator 0. Okay. Now, in this particular case, it just so happened that uh, 
x equaling 0 made the denominator 0. We'll take a look at other cases where um, you can have a value of x that makes the denominator 0, but x itself is not 0. Anyways, make a note of this, and uh, then in a moment I'll tell you about the horizontal asymptote. Now, with regard to the horizontal asymptote, you will find that uh, at the value of y, oh, I'm sorry, at the value y is approaching as x gets very big. In other words, we've seen this before with n behavior. As x goes to infinity, uh, positive infinity, or as x goes to negative infinity, whatever y is whatever value y is approaching in other words here y is getting closer and closer to zero um, that is where we'll have our horizontal asymptote at this case y equals zero